Phil Eklund is a designer known for developing games with a scientific slant and with deeply engaging rules that you really need to get stuck into. Bios Megafauna is no exception. Bios Megafauna is based upon American Megafauna, but the game is much more accessible and the components have been upgraded extensively. It plays for 1 to 4 in 2 hours 12 plus, published by Sierra Madre Games. I'm going to play you through the Solitaire variant. I think that's something I can demonstrate easily with a complete playthrough. First step is to show you what's in the box and walk you through the setup. Here's our rule book. I've actually got a copy of the latest living rules. So this is a, these are the rules that, you kept, that come in the box and it's perfectly playable, perfectly decent. You don't need anything other than this rule set. But they have been developing, and that's why they're called a, a living rules, a few little tweaks and, and they're minor tweaks here and there. I think they make the game slightly easier is what I understand it. I'm going to try and show you those um, additional living rules as we play through this. The premise of the game is that you're playing a, a set of animal species. There's four players in the game. There's four green and orange, white and red. And there's up to four species of each animal. And you can see that there's different, uh, what they call silhouettes, representing each of these four different species. These are the mammals. So white and orange are the two mammal sets. And these are the dinosaurs. Red and green representing the dinosaurs. So it's mammals versus dinosaurs. You start the game with an archetype species and you have a placeholder for that. And then you have four placeholder cards in total. As you diversify and generate new species, and these could be predators or herbivores, um, you've got four different species, distinct species, representing each of, by, the, by each of these silhouettes. And each of these species will develop different characteristics. Okay. By modifying genes, yeah, hibernation or switchblade core, placental reproduction, nose horn, and each one of these different mutations, these new cards, will develop these individual species in some way to allow them to adapt to an ever-changing environment and ever-changing species around them on which they can prey or um, if they're herbivores then different plants that are coming in and out of the map which is which is here. It all starts to make sense what I show you but the premise is that you've got to try and survive through four ages of the game. At the end of each age we'll have a scoring so there's a, a continual a scoring mechanism and then there's a final scoring at the end and you'll be learning points based on how many um, different animals you have populating the world so how and so how diverse you are is your ability to populate this world uh, there's greenhouse effects that are changing the environment and moving things migrating up and down the map these are the tiles these are from the Mesozoic period so these are plants and animals immigrants that are coming in and around and populating and changing the, the landscape. We have a second set, the Cenozoic. We have some tokens here that represent genes that you can spend to buy your genetic modifications. The red tokens here, these are just for uh, marking some tracks on the board. Um, and you've got some tiles here that allow you to inherit um, particular genes from your parents. I'm going to play Solitaire, and Solitaire we always use the the white player, um, and they play the, the two tusker. And I'm going to play the two toothed dinosaurs, okay? So for the dummy player in the solitaire game, you're only going to need 24 of these uh, wooden animal tokens. So you can remove eight, so just grab one of these species. Let's take out the dolphin shaped ones. Two, four, six, eight. Right, that leaves us with 24, and these will all be, although they've got different silhouettes, within the solitaire game they just represent one species, so you kind of ignore the silhouette if you like, and they're the two Tusker. And as you only have one species for the solo player, you can remove three of these four placeholders and just keep the archetypal one. We'll need this, this is their home biome, this is where they're going to begin play on the map, and we'll push these inheritance tiles to one site for now. 
The other thing we're going to need are these jeans, and the dummy player starts with 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The rest go back to the bag or the box and won't come into the game. You're going to start with zero genes in the solitaire game, and this is the kind of currency which you buy your genetic mutations with. For the dinosaur player, for me, I'm going to take these four placeholders, my five inheritance tiles, all 32 of the wooden animals and my home biome. We'll need these red tokens in a moment when we set up the board. Let's do that now. Here's the board laid out. There's two sets of era tiles. The Cenozoic ones we're going to need in the second half of the game, so I'm just going to leave those to one side for now. Backed up. These are the Mesozoic. We need to give these a good shuffle and draw 22 at random. These are called biomes. Okay, I'll take the top one. This is a biome. These places here are slots. Alright, so biomes go in slots. I've drawn a purple one. This is a C biome. So this is going to dictate that an area of the map is this C biome. And I'm looking in this bottom left corner, this sun with the 14 in it. And this sun tells me which latitude this sea biome is going to go in. We've got Arctic, Jet Stream, Horse Latitude and Tropics. There's actually two rows here for the Tropics. So this one, having a sun on it, is going to go into this Horse Latitude book. All right, so during setup, it's going to go in here. Now the actual slot it goes in is determined by these numbers here, 1, 6, 5, 3. This is called the Climax. And when we're pulling out and setting a new biome on the board, it always goes into the slot with the lowest Climax. So number one here. So this place here on the right, on the east of the Atlantic Rift, becomes a Ganoid sea biome. Okay, let's head on and grab the next one. Okay, this one has the tropics on it. But this time it has no number. This is an immigrant with this light blue background as opposed to this dark blue background. It's blue, so I know it's the sea biome but it's an immigrant. They're going to come into play during the game, not during setup. And in actual fact, the living rules tell us that we discard this now. If you're playing the rules out of the box, you just put this back in the supply over here. Okay? With the living rules, it says discard. So I'm going to put this back in the box. And that's quite cool, because what it means is that, and this is one of those easier things, that we're kind of taking out, we're purging some of these immigrants from our pool of Mesozoic tiles or biomes. Right, the next one is this is another immigrant. This one's kind of amphibian. It's part yellow, part blue. And again, it's a tropics one, but it's an immigrant. It's going to go back to the box. Okay, now we have one in the, the tropics, a Syad thicket. This one's green. It's a terrestrial biome, and it has a number, so it's not an immigrant. It's number 41 and it's in the tropics. So we find the slot with the lowest climax in the tropics. It's one here, so this side thicket goes here. Now this is good, this is populating the world. You know, we've got some sea uh, biome, we've got some terrestrial biome, and these are plants and animals that our, our animals can predate on, okay, or graze on. And what you're looking for during setup is a good mix of biomes in and around where you're going to start, which is going to be here for me. Okay, remember this is my archetypal animal. It's going to begin the game here, but we'll come to that in a moment. Okay, what's next? We've got another terrestrial biome in the tropics, um, and it's going to find the lowest climax. Now, this number now in the bottom left is 41 on the side of thicket we've already placed. That becomes the new climax for the biome. So it was 1, now it's 41. All right, so when you're looking for the lowest climax biome, you can look at this number. As it goes number 2, here this empty slot is where our termite mounds are going to go. Next, another immigrant, another tropical, this time a uh, sea Biome, number three, a terrestrial one. Okay, here we've got one with a mountain range on it. This is an orogeny biome, they're orange. They have this little triangle uh, symbol here. 
sometimes these are volcanic, they have a little volcano here. This one isn't, the Iberian Svarg... Svargnum Bog. <laughs> nice. Well, during setup, these are always going to go into the eastern mountainous region. There's two mountainous regions, each with three slots. One, two, three. One, two, three. One's already filled here. And once more, they're going to go into the one with the Linus Climax, so it's four, five, six. And during setup, you always put them in the eastern uh, mount mountain range, the Hercinian range. Okay, so this is going to go here, number four. Next, uh, terrestrial, and this one's in the jet stream. Number one's here. 49 sun. So you can see you can get through these quite quite quickly. It's a yellow one, that's an immigrant. I'll finish setting these up and we'll come back once I'm done. Okay, that's it. I've placed the final one. And I've got to say, that was a pretty good starting setup as it goes. The two Tuskers are going to start up here in this uh, number three slot in the Arctic. My home biome is going to be down here, and I've got plenty of sea and terrestrial uh, biomes around me. So that's not bad, that's pretty good. That's going to give me plenty of spaces in which I can expand. Now we've set up the board, let's set up our placeholders. So we've got four of these, doesn't matter what order you put them, but let's put our archetypal type here so it's, it's plain, and then put each type of these wooden pieces on their respective silhouette and there should be eight of each type these are like little dinosaurs crocodilian ones a little dinosaur type guy and this is kind of a bird type type species right, the, seat, the, the silhouette and these things are kind of um, irrelevant as, at this stage of the game because what they become is yet to be decided these inheritance tiles we'll place them to one side for now and this is our home buy and we'll go and place this on the map and it's here for us in the tropics. We'll do the same for the two Tusker, these up here. And we've got to place one token representing their archetypal species on their home biome. Now remember, for the two Tusker, the actual piece we use is irrelevant because they're all deemed to be equal. But for us, we need to go and grab this one, the archetypal silhouette and placing on this starting point here in the in with the giant mirror pods. So there we go, each of us has one animal on the map. We need to grab one more of our archetypal species. And during a multiplayer game you start down here at size one. The dummy player is always going to be size three throughout the rest of the game. And what you'll see is during play we'll be changing the size of our animals. We start here down at this rabbit sized animal here at start number one. And what that means of course is because you've only got eight tokens and there is a limit. It's not like a, an infinite number of these things. You are limited by the number of tokens because one of them is being used on the size track. That means you've only got seven left to populate the, the world with. As it goes some of them are going to uh, appear on these other spots on the board, so you're going to be even fewer numbers will actually be out here. But you know, the environment can't sustain that many anyway, as, as you're going to see as the as the game develops. Next thing we need to do is go and grab some cards. So I'm going to give this a good old shuffle, and these are mutation and genotype cards. Okay, these are mutations. This is a genotype. All right, and I'll explain those as and when we get to the game, but there's a whole big stack of them, and during one game you're only going to use a small subset of these, okay? So there's lots of variability, these are going to go back to the box, there's lots of variability in your games depending on what cards are coming out, okay? So let's give these a shuffle and then I'll show you how to set these cards up. All done. The box lid comes with a handy guide. We're going to create four decks, and that's going to represent each of the different time periods within the game, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous and Tertiary. And the box lid says that the Triassic period starts with a number of cards equal to three times the number of players, Jurassic 5, Cretaceous 8 and Tertiary 7. Although we're playing one player, the dummy player counts as one, so you draw six cards, two, three, one, two, three, three per player, and this is going to become our starting deck for the Jurassic period. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five cards for Jurassic. We're going to take five more cards, and this is going to form what's called a display. One, two, three, four, five. I'll put those here for now. The rest of the cards, they go back to the box. Okay, so that's it. A small subset of cards. There's lots of variability here. Remember the objective of the game. We've got four period decks here. This deck is going to get cycled through, and there's only six cards here. I'll show you how the cards get moved out of this deck when we get into gameplay. There's six cards here, five here, and so on. When we get through this deck, we end the Jurassic period, and we move, sorry, we end the Triassic period, and we move to the Jurassic period. But at the end of each period, we have a scoring round, and we're going to score based on how many animals you have on the board. So our aim is to get more animals on the board, on the map, um, for the end of each one of these four rounds. Okay? And in doing so, we're going to be scoring victory points. Um, these victory points are going to come from the tar pit here, but we'll show you that um, when we reach the end of the, of the Triassic period. Now we've got five cards. They're going to form what's called a display in a line up here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we've got five mutations for the start of the game. That's okay. We're going to be able, each turn, to grab cards from here. And when we grab one, everything's going to shuffle and we'll draw a new one from the uh, period deck that we're in, so the Triassic deck, and it'll get placed here on the end. Okay? And thus, if we do that five times, we've made it through the period. So, you know, you could get through this, uh, this period quite quickly. Once we start playing, I'll show you what, uh, what those means and all the different actions you can take on your turn. Meanwhile, we've got to set these red discs on the board. We place one on the Atlantic Rift spot here, and one over here on the, the era point. So this is just a little marker, okay? When we reach this point and this gets removed, then we start to use the Cenozoic tiles rather than the Mesozoic tiles. And this one is called the Atlantic Rift Disc, and we removed this right after the game's first catastrophe. Again, we'll, we'll come to that when it happens. Finally, we've got to set the starting greenhouse level on this track down here in the bottom left. And it's going to start at 800 ppm as our level of CA2 in the greenhouse. That's our starting pot. Now, this can go up and down as uh, events happen. Okay, The greenhouse gases go up or down the planet is getting hotter or the planet planet's getting cooler. Alright. Now while we're in this section here below this line, eight engine and below, all empty slots on the board count as land. Um, when we're up here, then ice caps are melted, sea levels have gone up, empty slots are marine. Okay, animals are either terrestrial, marine or amphibian, they can actually um, happily exist in either water or land. Right, so we start the game here at 800, and we'll see more of this as the game develops. That's it, we're all set up, ready to go. We're going to get to go first. The player with the, with the species with the fewest number of teeth gets to go first. Our dinosaurs have two teeth. The fewer teeth you have, the more um, predaceous you are, or carnivorous you are. Um, that's not inherent at the beginning of the game, uh, but we'll see again as, as the game develops. So we've got two teeth. The... Two Tuskers, the dummy player, they've got five. Don't remember their size is, is three throughout the rest of the game. The two Tusker, this dummy player, is not going to play intelligently. Their aim really is just to click through this deck. Right? They're going to click, make, make the game push along. Because otherwise, you know, you could, playing solitaire, just kind of delay, 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 you know, doing stuff that doesn't cause the period to move through. The dummy player, they're going to be ticking quite quickly through this deck. But they're also going to be expanding out... Um, into these different biomes as well, and they could become you know, fodder for your animals. Um, the interesting thing about this game is that you want to be able to set up a situation where your animals can survive. And remember, you've got to try and diversify, grab DNA that allows you to create your new species and potentially provide food for your own species. So you might want to create a predator that's happily feeding on one of your herbivores who's happily feeding on the... the you know, the grasses or the trees, the meadow in the biome, all right? So, you know, if you can do that kind of situation then you, where you're supporting your own animals, then 
you can get more out onto the board. And remember, we are aiming to, to get more animals out onto the board um, before each of the four scoring rounds. Okay, we'll come into the details of you know, predation and everything, you know, how herbivores behave and everything once we get into gameplay, which we're going to do in the very next episode. Join me next time.